In Nichiren Daishonin's profound teachings, he draws a remarkable parallel between the seemingly ordinary grain of rice and the transformative power of the Lotus Sutra. This analogy unveils the profound impact our actions and beliefs can have on the very sustenance that nourishes our lives. In his poetic words, and it is also this way with rice, while the rice itself is the same, that rice which nourishes a slanderer of the law supports the life of one who destroys the seeds of Buddhahood, enabling him to become a more powerful enemy than ever. And yet, does it not sustain his life so that he will in the end be won over to the Lotus Sutra? Nichiren Daishonin suggests that the very rice that sustains a slanderer of the Lotus Sutra, while remaining inherently unchanged, takes on a paradoxical nature. On one hand, it enables the slanderer to persist in their destructive actions, becoming an even greater obstacle to the propagation of the Buddha's teachings. Yet, Nichiren Daishonin poses the question, might not this same rice ultimately serve as a means to guide the slanderer towards embracing the Lotus Sutra? In contrast, he presents a profound insight into the rice that nourishes the votary, the devout follower, of the Lotus Sutra. On the other hand, Rice which nourishes the votary of the Lotus Sutra must be rice of the utmost compassion, because it benefits all living beings. This is what is meant by the Buddha's relics turning into rice. Here, Nichiren Daishonin elevates the humble grain to a divine essence, equating it with the Buddha's relics, the physical remains imbued with the Buddha's enlightened life force. The rice that sustains those who uphold and propagate the Lotus Sutra becomes a vessel of supreme compassion, benefiting not only the individual but all sentient beings. This profound analogy echoes the teachings of the Lotus Sutra itself, which state, If there is a good man or a good woman who accepts and upholds this sutra, whether reading, reciting, interpreting or copying it, that person has been looked upon and attended to by all the Buddhas. In this light, Nichiren Daishonin's revelation about the property of rice is a testament to the far-reaching implications of our actions and beliefs. By embracing and propagating the Lotus Sutra, even the most mundane aspects of our existence, such as the rice that nourishes us, become imbued with the Buddha's compassionate blessings, benefiting not only ourselves but all beings. Nichiren Daishonin's insights into the property of rice resonate profoundly with the teachings of prominent Nichiren Buddhist scholars throughout history. The esteemed Nikko Shonen, Nichiren Daishonin's senior disciple, echoed this sentiment in his writings. Even a single grain of rice that nourishes the votary of the Lotus Sutra is endowed with the virtue of the Buddha's relics, for it sustains the life of one who embraces and propagates the supreme teaching of the One Vehicle. Nikko Shonen's words underscore the profound significance of even the most humble sustenance when consumed by those committed to upholding the Lotus Sutra's teachings. Each grain becomes a vessel of the Buddha's boundless compassion and virtue. Similarly, the revered scholar and reformer Nichikan Shonen expounded on this concept, stating, Just as the Buddha's relics possess the power to dispel calamities and bring forth blessings, so too does the rice that nourishes the true votary of the Lotus Sutra carry the capacity to transform the very realm in which it is consumed. Nichikan Shonen's insights reveal the transformative potential inherent in the sustenance consumed by those wholeheartedly dedicated to the Lotus Sutra's propagation. The rice becomes a catalyst for positive change, dispelling obstacles and ushering in blessings throughout the surrounding environment. Furthermore, the esteemed scholar and leader Nitatsu Shonen offered this profound guidance. Let us approach each meal with reverence for the rice we consume is infused with the Buddha's compassion when partaken by those who uphold the Lotus Sutra. Through this act, we not only nourish our own lives but contribute to the perpetuation of the Buddha's teachings for the sake of all beings. Nitatsu Shonen's words remind us to approach our sustenance with a sense of gratitude and reverence, recognizing the profound implications of embracing the Lotus Sutra's teachings. By doing so, even the act of nourishing ourselves becomes a means of propagating the Buddha's compassionate wisdom throughout the world. Nichiren Daishonin's profound analogy of the property of rice stands as a testament to the far-reaching impact of our beliefs and actions. It reminds us that by wholeheartedly embracing and propagating the Lotus Sutra, 
we imbue even the most mundane aspects of our existence with the transformative power of the Buddha's compassion, benefiting not only ourselves but all sentient beings. Through the insights of revered Nichiren Buddhist scholars, we are reminded to approach our sustenance with reverence, recognizing its potential to dispel calamities, usher in blessings, and contribute to the perpetuation of the Buddha's teachings. In this way, the humble grain of rice becomes a profound embodiment of the Lotus Sutra's teachings, nourishing not only our physical bodies but our spiritual aspirations as well. Nichiren Daishonin's profound teachings on the property of rice continue to unveil deeper layers of wisdom and inspiration. I cannot express my joy at your having sent a messenger all the way here at such a time. Can it be that Shakyamuni Buddha or the Bodhisattvas of the earth have entered into your body? In this passage, Nichiren Daishonin expresses his profound gratitude towards his devoted follower who sent offerings and a messenger to him, even amidst his exile on the remote island of Sado. His rhetorical question suggests that such an act of unwavering faith and compassion could only be inspired by the Buddha himself or the Bodhisattvas of the earth, embodiments of supreme wisdom and compassion. Nichiren Daishonin's reverence for his disciples' actions stems from his profound understanding of the transformative power inherent in embracing and propagating the Lotus Sutra. He recognizes that such selfless acts of devotion are not mere gestures but manifestations of the Buddha's teachings themselves, imbuing even the simplest offerings with profound significance. Continuing his guidance, Nichiren Daishonin states, I entrust you with the propagation of Buddhism in your province. Because the seeds of Buddhahood sprout in response to the proper influence, one expounds the teaching of the One Vehicle. Here, Nichiren Daishonin bestows upon his disciple the sacred responsibility of propagating the Buddhist teachings, specifically the One Vehicle, the ultimate and all-encompassing doctrine of the Lotus Sutra. He acknowledges that the seeds of Buddhahood, the inherent potential for enlightenment within all beings, can only sprout and flourish under the proper influence, the propagation of the Lotus Sutra's teachings. This profound statement echoes the teachings of the Lotus Sutra itself, which proclaim, This is the final teaching of the Buddha, and all the teachings he taught before were merely provisional teachings leading to the One Vehicle. By entrusting his disciple with the propagation of the One Vehicle, Nichiren Daishonin affirms his conviction that the Lotus Sutra represents the culmination of the Buddha's teachings, the ultimate path to enlightenment for all beings. Furthermore, Nichiren Daishonin expresses his intention to send additional disciples, such as Jibu Bo and Shimotsuke Bo, to assist in this crucial mission, underscoring the collective effort required to propagate the Lotus Sutra's teachings effectively. Finally, Nichiren Daishonin offers guidance on conveying his teachings to Lord Mitsuno, a prominent figure of the time. And if you have an opportunity to see Lord Mitsuno, please carefully explain what I have said. This instruction highlights Nichiren Daishonin's unwavering determination to share the profound insights he has gained from the Lotus Sutra with those in positions of influence and authority. By carefully explaining his teachings to Lord Mitsuno, Nichiren Daishonin aimed to sow the seeds of the Lotus Sutra's propagation even among the influential members of society recognizing the far-reaching impact such individuals could have in spreading the Buddha's teachings. Throughout this discourse, Nichiren Daishonin's profound reverence for the Lotus Sutra and its transformative power shines through. He elevates the humble act of offering sustenance to a sacred ritual, imbuing it with the boundless compassion and wisdom of the Buddha's teachings. Furthermore, he entrusts his disciples with the crucial mission of propagating the One Vehicle doctrine acknowledging their pivotal role in enabling the seeds of Buddhahood to sprout and flourish throughout the land. Nichiren Daishonin's insights into the property of rice serve as a powerful reminder that by wholeheartedly embracing and propagating the Lotus Sutra, even the most ordinary aspects of our existence become infused with profound significance and transformative potential. It is a call to approach our daily actions and sustenance with reverence, recognizing their capacity to contribute to the perpetuation of the Buddha's teachings and the realization of enlightenment for all beings.